Now let us discuss the terminal velocity in the case of a falling sky diver. When the sky diver just out of the aeroplane, their velocity is 0, their initial velocity 0. When the sky diver just after leaving the plane, actually in the air resistance is 0. Suppose the mass of the man or sky diver is 50 kilogram, the weight of the sky diver acting vertically downward is 500 Newton. Therefore, the velocity is 0 meter per second, the initial vertical downward velocity is 0. A few seconds later, now the air resistance is on, it is 100 Newton, downward weight is 500 Newton, therefore the velocity increases to 30 meter per second. As the velocity increases, it encounters more re air resistance. So, air resistance depends on the area of the body and the velocity of the body and this is due to the Newton's second law of motion. The acceleration of the sky diver is equal to net force by mass. Here the what is the net force 500 minus 100 by 50 that is equal to 8 meter per second square. So, initially all the bodies are falling at the uh, 10 meter per second square rate, but now it is 8 meter per second square, but its velocity is still increasing. A few more seconds pass the air resistance increases to 400 Newton the weight is 500 Newton. Now, the velocity is 50 meter per second. Another few seconds later, the air resistance is 500 Newton which is equal to the weight of the sky diver. Now, the velocity is 60 meter per second. So, the upward force is equal to upward force due to air resistance is equal to the downward weight. So, this is the case two forces balances and this velocity is called terminal velocity. So, terminal velocity is the velocity at which the weight of the sky diver is balanced by the force due to air resistance. Now, this velocity continues. Now, if you open the parachute, since the area is very large, the force due to air resistance is 2000 Newton, the downward force is very small, it is 500 Newton. So, in the velocity, terminal velocity is 60 meter per second within a second or a couple of seconds the air resistance is 500 Newton which balances the downward weight 500 Newton. Now, the velocity is greatly reduced to 2 meter per second and this velocity is the terminal velocity again and it will continues up to the ground level. So, safely he the sky diver reached the ground. Now, this is the table which shows the a force and acceleration velocity of the sky diver at a different stages. The weight is always constant at all stages it is constant. The force due to air resistance is increasing 0, 100, 400, 500 up to the opening of parachute. The acceleration due to gravity decreases from 10, 8, 2 and 0. So, when the acceleration is 0 there is no more increase of velocity. This velocity is constant. When the parachute is opened, here at uh, 2000 Newton, the acceleration is minus 30 meter per second square, then it is 0 meter per second square. At this stage, the terminal velocity is 2. So, due to the air resistance, we can safely land on the earth from a plane by a parachute. So, this is the concept in the uh, sky diver. Now, here is a very simple question a hammer and a feather are dropped simultaneously from a particular height which will reach the ground first it is very simple. The hammer will reach the ground first because the feather it encounters more resistance. Now, if you do this activity 
in the surface of the moon what will happen a hammer and feather are dropped simultaneously from a particular height in the surface of the moon which of the following is correct it is a question these are the options both will reach the ground simultaneously b they will float in the sky c the hammer will reach the ground first d the feather will reach the ground first what is your answer now let us see the answer in 1971 david r scott in the apollo 15 mission that astronaut the american astronaut did this experiment actually he did this experiment with the hammer and falcon feather he dropped simultaneously and both reached the ground simultaneously and many students and public viewed this incident in the tv in 1971 so the answer is very simple both reached the ground simultaneously what is the reason there is no atmosphere in the moon's surface so in the absence of air all the bodies influenced by the gravity of the planet or the moon so they reach the ground simultaneously